Between Lamography and Diana, toy cameras have become an integral part of the film photography community. But there is one that, well, it may not be the first, it certainly is one of the most iconic. Today, I'm talking about the Holga 120N. Hey there friends, Alex Lokes here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to give you a camera review. Now, if you've been following along, you'll know that this first week of October is Holga Week, and it's one that I always love to participate in. So I figured if you were on the fence about getting a Holga, thinking about getting into toy camera photography in general, I should give you a review of the camera that got me into toy camera photography. And from a historical perspective, the Holga has an interesting history. So let's head back into the studio and I can give you a breakdown of the camera's rise, demise, and rebirth in the 21st century, and also give you a tour of this plastic fantastic beauty. Now, all right, I'll see you back here in a few. The 1980s saw an explosion in the popularity of photography in China, specifically medium format film. However, there lacked a new affordable camera. Sure, there were cameras from the 1960s, like the Diana or the Debonair. Enter into this void, Li Ting Mo, a former Yashica employee who formed his own firm in 1969. Li's firm first built capacitors, but then moved on to building complete flash units. The WOC205X became renowned for their quality and power, and they were marked with the characters for Ho Guao, which translated means very bright. However, as camera technology advanced and integral flashes began appearing in point-and-shoot cameras, the need for external flash units along with market saturation caused Lee's firm to struggle financially, at least until he latched onto the idea of building a medium format camera for the masses. Using a play off of the Ho Guao, the name on his flash units, the first Holgas appeared in 1982, but never caught on in the domestic market. The trouble was that 120 film had started to take a back seat to 35mm in the amateur market. That same decade, China's control over the economy slackened a little enough to allow for export of products into Western markets, where photographers started to take notice of the cheap toy camera. The Holga, an instant success among this niche group. Art photography gobbled up the quirky, surrealistic and impressionist images produced by this medium format camera from China. But what solidified the Holga was a 2001 image of then presidential candidate Al Gore by David Burnett. Sales skyrocketed to over 1 million units. The Holga had formed its own cottage industry. Rapid diversification of products followed. 35mm, pinhole, pseudo TLRs, even Holga lenses for SLRs. But Holga struggled to keep up a victim of its own success. And the now rampant market for toy cameras, Holga continued to ride high through its 30th anniversary in 2011. But that would be the high watermark, and also the beginning of the end. By 2015, Lee decided to retire, unable to keep up with the fast-moving technology and continued popularity of digital and improved smartphone cameras, not to mention photo-sharing platforms that allowed for editing to get that toy camera look. And well, some thought it was all over. Freestyle Photographic, along with Sunrise Manufacturing, secured much of the original Holga Molds, and restarted production in 2017, resulting in a return to popularity in a resurgent film photography hobby. And here it is, the beautiful yet simple Holga 120N. Now, I've had two versions of this camera. The first one was a original model that was produced pre-2015. I ended up giving that one away. This is one of the new versions, so this is one of the ones produced by Sunrise in conjunction with Freestyle, post-2017. And between the two, I actually prefer the look that I get out of this camera than the other one. So let's take a brief tour. It's very simple. It is, again, built around that original mold. Up at the front, you have your lens, the optical lens, a 60 millimeter F8, and it is, sort of a zone focus. So you have up at the top, you have your mountains, group of people, two people, headshot for close focus. Unfortunately, there is no corresponding 
distance measure, so you just kind of have to guess and adjust your aperture. You have two choices of aperture that's controlled by this switch here. You have it wide open at f8 for cloudy and partially sunny days, and then you have it stopped down to, I would hazard guess about f16 for bright sunny days. And you also have up at the top, you have your film advance and a actual hot shoe, which is great. And here is your shutter release. It is set to instant, so it gives you about a 1 25th of a second, 1 125th of a second, or bulb mode, and that's controlled by this switch down here. Also have a standard tripod socket. On the back, you have an optical viewfinder this actually works really well to help with composing images. You do have to watch for parallax error, but other than that, it is actually quite handy to give you the idea of what your image composition is going to be. Here at the back, you have your red window to help with advance, and you'll notice that it has two options, 12 and 16. And you flip it up. You have it set for 12 when you're working with the 6x6 mask or you flip it up to 16 if you're working but with the 645 mask. I like to keep mine down at 12 because I mostly work six by six. Open up the back, you have the two spring-loaded clips and then the entire back pops off. And then right here, you have two foam padded compartments where you put your spool of film and your take up spool. And then you have that mask and that easily lifts away and you can put in a six by four and a half centimeter mask here. You also get a great shot of how the shutter actually works. So quite a simple um, device. You could probably use it without the mask, but then you lose that extra, you lose your um, film guides here. So I honestly wouldn't recommend it. And that's it, it is really simple. So let's take this back out into the field and get the film loaded and get shooting. All right, see you there. Okay, so now into the best part. I am here in downtown Milton, Ontario. I have my Holga 120N loaded with Kodak T-Max 100 film, which I'm going to be developing in Ilfotech LC29. So let's take a wander around. I can tell you a little bit about my experience with the camera and how it works in the field. All right, let's get walking. If you're the type of person who wants complete control over their exposure and are big into optical quality, then a Holga isn't for you. You might even consider them a waste of film. While tricky, loading the film is actually quite easy, but you do have to remove the entire back and make sure to apply a bit of pressure and tension to avoid the dreaded fat rolls when winding the film. Also make sure to pick the film based on the light on the day that you're shooting. Although if needed, you can apply some push or pull to help with potential over or under exposure in the field. Once shooting, you have a basic viewfinder which helps with composition, but you always want to double check for parallax error. Focusing is only by guess, but with two apertures of f8 and f16 approximately, you do have a bit of forgiveness with depth of field. The camera controls are well placed with the shutter release being a large lever next to your lens and has a satisfying click when released at an approximate shutter speed of about 1 60th to 1 125th. 
but you also have bulb exposure and that switch is on the bottom of the lens mount, so you don't accidentally change the setting. Be careful when advancing the film, it is a red window based, but not all backing paper does well with this. You might even consider covering it up. Holgas do tend to have light leaks, so you can either embrace this or just cover up the leaks with scab for tape. Either way, you're looking for a lighthearted camera for imperfect images, then the Holga is a wonderful tool. Although what truly makes a Holga a Holga is its optics. Simple, to the point, and just brimming with character. And that's a drink to you, John Roberts. So, while I finish off the roll, let's talk a little bit more about the character of the lens and what you can create with it. All right, let's keep walking. In addition to the no two cameras are the same nature of Holgas, what really make the camera magical is the lens. These days, with high quality multi-element and advanced coatings, the Holgas go back to basics. The optical lens is 60mm in focal length, which has a certain charm and helps with avoiding too much camera shake and gets a good wide-ish angle with the 6x6. It's a happy medium between wide angle and normal. It's a single element meniscus lens made from plastic. It's subject to vignetting and fall off at the corners. You'll see more at f8 than f16, but also your copy has a lot to do with how the images turn out. You'll find that they're sharpest at the center, but then get more soft as you move out towards the corners. Knowing this can be to your advantage in how you compose your images. Just place the subjects dead center. Well, there we have it, 12 frames, and that is my thoughts on the Holga. It is certainly not a perfect camera by any stretch of the imagination. Every single one is a different beast into itself, but the one thing it is, it's fun. And if there's one thing that we definitely need these days is more fun and fun with our cameras and fun with photography. Holgas aren't for everyone, I'll admit it. I don't take it out that often, I really just bring it out for reviews, World Toy Camera Day, Holga Week, where I just sort of embrace the imperfections and have some fun. But if it's your jam, by all means, I love the work that people make with the Holga, and there's a ton of choices out there. It's not just the good old fashioned 120N, there's ones with flashes, there's 35mm, there's panoramic pinholes, you name it, they produce it. And the best part is, is that they're actually affordable, most running between $30 and $40 new and a little bit cheaper on the used market. So let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite Holga to work with? What do you like to use your Holga for? If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification icon, and of course, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, friends, my name's Alex Lowe. Get out there, stay safe. Plastic, sometimes you just recycle it, sometimes it makes a great camera.